Hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. And today, we're continuing on in our series leading up to Christmas on having heavenly peace, keeping heavenly peace in our heart, in our life, in our home. Um, that can be difficult um, during this season with so much busyness and things that are going on to juggle everything. Um, and if we don't ground ourselves in the Word of God every day, if we don't come before His presence and spend time in the secret place, then it won't take long for your peace to be drained out of you if you've put your peace in, in your own confidence, in your own way. But if we put our peace in God, if we if we place our trust um, in Him and, and just lean on Him, leaning on not our understanding, but in all our ways, uh, Proverbs tells us in chapter 3, to acknowledge Him. And as we acknowledge Him, meaning acknowledging Him, making Him first in our life, putting Him first in our life, then He says that He will lead us in the paths that we need to go. He, if we trust Him and lean not onto our understanding, but in our ways, acknowledge Him, put Him first, then He will direct our step. He will line up our path with his perfect will. And so that's the power of the Word of God in our life today. That is, we open the Word of God as we read it, as we absorb it into our life um, and, and plant it deep. Then there will be results of us planting that seed deep inside our heart that will not only be birthed in our life and grown in our life, but it will also be um noticed and taken into account by those around us by how we live our life what we say what we do um, and so this is the important part of us dwelling in his presence in his peace in his word and and standing on his word um, as our shield as our protection um, and as our, our place of comfort so today I want to give you a word straight from Jesus, which is in Matthew chapter 5. And this piece that I'm going to talk about is probably one of the hardest ones for us to do at times when we are faced with difficult people or difficult situations, um, is, is to be a peacemaker or a peacekeeper. And this is something that Jesus asks us to do. So as we look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So if you are a peacemaker, that means not only that you you choose to have peace for yourself, but you want it for others. And so when other people try to do things that try to offend you or hurt you or harm you, instead of responding back in the same way that they would respond to you, we would respond to that person with the peace of Jesus, the kindness of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus. Not all times do we in our flesh um, respond that way. Sometimes, you know, someone may catch you on a day where you are really dealing with a lot of difficulty. And if the Holy Spirit is not in you fully that day, if you're not operating in it and in a place where you can um, feel that peace of God and when you're going through struggles, that's probably the hardest time to be a peacekeeper. But at the same time, Jesus is telling us that we will be blessed by that. We will be blessed by being a person in the room who can hold it together by the grace of God and have mercy and love and kindness and compassion for those who are not showing those things to us, who are doing the opposite, who are causing chaos, who are causing disruption, who are who are causing um, problems for us or maybe even for our families, you know, to find a way or even in your workplace. You know, there's a lot of disruptive, um, I would call them people that are uh, explosive people that just constantly are causing turmoil maybe where you work in your workplace. And, and everybody's experienced that. We've all experienced people who just keep the pot stirred and keep bad feelings stirred and, and put thoughts in our mind that aren't even really the truth, but they just constantly are stirring the pot because Satan is using them. It's a spirit. It's not that person. It's a spirit on that person that is um, stirring up evil and, and dissension and division and hatred and things like that. These things are caused by the enemy of our soul. We know that. And so when these, when these spirits rise up against us, then the Spirit of the Lord has to be greater in us. Greater is He is that is in us than he that's in this world. Other people may respond to something one way, but we have to respond in a different way as, as a child of God. We have to respond through the Spirit, as He's telling us here, to be a peace 
peace maker. Instead of arguing and fighting and fussing with people who are causing trouble and, and strife, instead we come in and try to find a way to bring people together to honor God in our actions and our words. So this is probably one of the most difficult ones to do, especially if you're the one that is being persecuted or mistreated or, or talked about. But we have to just realize that all these things happen to Jesus too. And if they happen to Jesus, if he was if he was abused, if he was mistreated, if he was spat upon, if he was rejected, when we exemplify those same things of Jesus Christ in our life, we're going to experience those rejections from this world and from the people around us. But the wonderful news is, is that there were those who, when Jesus exemplified compassion, it won them to him. And so if we can exemplify compassion in these difficult moments, in these, in these trying times, you know, especially when you have a lot of family together, um, a lot of times that can cause problems. Um, it shouldn't, but a lot of times it does, um, especially at the, the Christmas season and New Year's and all this, when, when big families get together, there can be fighting and feuding and arguing. Will you be the one as the body of Christ to stand up and say, wait a minute, let's find a solution to this. Let's let's talk this out. Let's let's air this out and let's cover this, this problem with the blood of Jesus and let's not go back and remember it anymore. Let's put it behind us. So that's really what Jesus is calling us to be, is to be not only a, a person who is walking with him in peace, but we bring peace to others because of the calm that we bring when we come in the room. There should be a calm in a Christian. There should be a calm in us that other people seek us out because being around us makes them feel better. Jesus in us should make people feel good. It should make um, us feel better and, and it should calm people because Jesus is our peace and if we can exemplify that peace to others, um, Jesus is telling us here the result of that is that that's how people will know and that's how he will know that we are a child of God, that we belong to him because we keep peace around us. We keep the peace of God in us and it comes out of us. I was looking at today my daily reading. I was reading in Acts um, chapter 9 and chapter 10 and I was reading about um, Peter and also about about Saul, Paul um, and his experience on that Damascus road and I was looking at the, the facts and looking at how he went from being a murderer of Christians and a persecutor of Christians, a hater of Christians to having that, that impactful event happening to him where he gets struck off his horse basically um, and blinded and finally actually sees the truth of God to see that God loved him to see that God had a different plan for him and the things that he thought he was doing for God in reality were killing and persecuting people and you know when you're in sin and you're doing things that you think are right you don't realize the harm that those things are not just bringing to you but to the people around you and the harm in that and I, I noticed that as Saul, when he became Paul, um, at first there were people who were skeptical of him and didn't even really want to be around him because they thought he was still the same old person, that Saul, instead of this new person in Christ, Paul. And I also noticed that those who had been for him when he was Saul and were behind him when he made this, this jump decision to start sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and telling people about the difference that Christ had made in his life, then those who once loved him now hated him. They hated him so much they wanted him dead. And you know, see, this world hates the Christ in us. And when you make a decision to serve God, when you make a decision to be a peacekeeper um, and to serve Jesus with your whole heart, whole mind, whole strength, then you're going to have adversaries coming at you. You're going to have the enemy coming at you um, in a way like you've never seen before. That's what Paul experienced. He said he lost it all. He lost everything, but yet he gained it all by knowing Jesus Christ, by knowing him. All, all these things that we have to go through, well, it will be worth it. The peace that passes all understanding that he talks about that would guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That peace that you can have today is available to you. The heavenly peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding. The world can't understand how we can have peace in a world that is full of chaos like it is right now. 
But our peace isn't in this world. Our peace is in Jesus Christ. Remind yourself of that today as you go through this day and you're thinking, what are some ways that I can shine the light of Christ to those around me that I work with, to those I live with, uh, to those I come in contact with today? Jesus is telling us, be a peacemaker. Find ways to bring people together and unite them under the name of Jesus. Don't try to do it in your own accord because you'll fail and you won't be able to do it. But instead, unite people under the name of Jesus by loving them and showing them the compassion that Jesus has shown you today. God bless you. I pray that this has helped you today. Please like, please share, subscribe um, to our channel. We love to have you follow us on this journey each and every day, getting closer to our Savior as He gets closer and closer to coming to get us. It could be any moment, any day now. So be in prayer um, and be that peacemaker. As we've talked about, we've talked about having perfect peace. We've talked about spoken peace. It can only be spoken by Jesus, our Messiah. And we've talked about today the peace that passes all understanding when we are a peacemaker and, and radiating that peace out into the environment that we're in. It, it changes everything. Peace will change you. God will change you. Jesus in your life and Him dwelling in you will change you forever. God bless you. I'll see you soon.